how to get places, I'd feel a bit better because then I'd know everything and know where to go. All right, good work, mate. All right, keep coming. Right now, the idea of going off on my own is, feels quite scary because I might make some mistakes. He was just starting out at school when you guys first came along and now he needs to be quite independent and not rely on so many adults, so it's quite frightening. <laughs> We're at the wall of farmers. Having lots of adults around, I think it's better than going by myself. Is it taking a long time to get over it's to the island? incredibly fresh. Camera. Sure. Hello, sure. How's it going? Good. Does it look like a fish? A little bit. Well, he's totally blind. He was born with no retina. That's the fluffy bit. Hi, Karen. Well, I'm Mike. Hello. Yes. He, he's right there. He's a very adventurous little boy. Yeah. Um, He's not afraid of anything. And headphones on your head properly. <laughs> Can you hear yourself? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what your name is. I'm Karen. No, I'm five. He's very, very intelligent little boy. At this stage, we don't want to push him too hard to grow up, and we just let him explore because he hasn't seen, it's quite amazing to watch him with something new because he gets so excited and his hands get so busy exploring. He has lost the sense that we see as most important, so he has to remember everything a lot better than what we do. When he wore shoes, it's like putting a blindfold on you. He used his feet to feel what he was on, like if he was on carpet, and he'd know, like, if he was walking in the hallway and he'd reach the kitchen, there was wood on the floor. What's that fish he got in his mouth? He has <laughs> spikes on his head. Does he have a spike on his head? He does, right at the end, see? I understand what he's going through, so... Uh, I don't treat him any differently than I would treat myself. I read him stories. Usually ones I make up because he likes to make up names for the characters. Did you give me toast? We didn't know he was born blind. It was when he was about seven, eight weeks old. He got like a sticky eye, so I took him to the doctor and it wouldn't heal. His corneas, which is the clear part of the eye, they went cloudy. When that happened, they sent him straight up to the hospital to see an ophthalmologist. He pretty much diagnosed glaucoma straight away. And they took him straight into theatre. While they were removing the lenses of his eyes, they, they found this tissue and um, they decided that the tissue was the retina that hadn't formed in his eyes. Here you go. You pop him on. No. Parenting Kyron is totally different from parenting a child that can see. Why is it raining? Because it is. There we go, all done. That... You have to teach him everything. You have to teach him how to wash himself, how to put his clothes on step by step. There you go. It's constant talking, telling him what you're doing. Hello using left and rights all the time. What do you think that is? Is that the connect? Yep. Describing things, trying to describe things. Yeah. What's that? That's the light, yep. And now I want to go to the garage. Okay, you want to find the garage? He asked me about the sun and he can feel the heat from the sun, so he doesn't understand that it's far away. He thinks he can reach out and touch it. I kind of describe it as it's a big 
ball of fiery gas and it's so hot to touch. I would love to see him live as normal life as possible and being able to achieve everything that he wants to achieve. I don't know anyone in Northland Kyren can role model. So I've got in touch with Don at Waiheke, who is also born blind and lives a full and rich life. What did Mummy tell you about Don? Don can't see. No, Don can't see. Why? His eyes are broken just like yours. But he can still talk. He can still talk. He can do everything just like you. Hello. Hello. Stop here. Stop here. What is that? This is Holly. Do you want to say hello to Holly? Hello, Holly. Yes, okay. that's a girl. Whose garage is there? That's my garage. Did it, is it off again? <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you this. You have a look inside this and tell me, what can you feel in here? Dots? Yes. And what do the dots say? K-Y-R-E-N. Yes. Kyron. Yes. It says Kyron. Who's Kyron? You? Hey, you've stolen the K. You have stolen the K, <laughs> you little tinker. Chiron is going to deal with the world through his brain, his hands and his ears. His ability to be able to feel, to identify, to tell texture, to learn to look for detail, those are the things that are going to help him to flourish. And here's New Zealand. That's where you and I are. Right there. Are you there? Mm. Hello, are you in there, Kyron? I'm in Australia. You're in Australia, are you? Oh, okay. Come on, Holly, take us fishing. Come on. Come on. You can hold on to it? Come on. Uh, getting about at five, I don't think you really think about it. You just kind of do it. Come on, Holly. Sometimes it goes wrong Holly. and sometimes you're lost, but usually you've got people around you who will in some way rescue you. And you learn by your mistakes. The magic of childhood, of exploration, of the joy of finding out, those are the wonderful things without any burden of restraint. I think it was Wordsworth who said, as we grow into childhood and into adolescence, the shades of the prison house draw in upon us. And that's very true. Kyron's nine now, so there's a lot more emphasis on him to do more for himself. Put your hand at your side. He is adopting that typical nine, ten-year-old attitude, and he's getting, he can be quite stroppy at times and quite demanding as opposed to when he was five and he just accepted everything. When I'm an adult, I won't take bossiness anymore. I won't tolerate it. I just tell them, if you're going to do that, leave me alone. I'm going to be the boss of my own self, or is someone going to still be going, do this, do that? Excuse me, mate. You forgot something. What have you forgotten? My hat. Yeah. Thanks. Adults are more serious. They want to stop me playing. I want some people, if they're going to go do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that, to leave me alone. So D's up high, and where was W? Down low. OK, so find D. Kyron still has full-time teacher aid at school, but what we want to do with that teacher aid is to have her step back more, to give the instructions and then step away. Kyron has 
been quite dependent as a young child and now is, is moving to become more independent. What's this one? You're a superstar, you found it. I don't know how you do that, but you've done it. Okay, mate, um, you're going to do your three times tables. Yeah. Okay, so okay. from one times three through to 12 times three. Okay. Okay, put your hand up when you're finished, okay? Okay. Awesome. Top or side. Top or side. His next major challenge will be moving into intermediate. So he will have been here six years and it's stable and familiar and everybody knows him. Our goal is to get that independence and that desire to work on his own and be part of the class more rather than being separate with a teacher aide. He gets quite frustrated at having to go to school. If he comes across something he really struggles at doing, then he gets quite frustrated and, and he gets upset and he'll say things like, why can't I see? If, if I could see, I could do this. I just want to be like the rest of them. Is there any way I can see again? Or is there any way I can see at all? What if there was no way? Then would I would be sad for the rest of my life. Because I'll be all lonely. I'll see you tomorrow for the last day of school, OK? OK. OK, have a good night. You might want to wash your face, OK? Wash your face now. Independence for anyone is an important thing and Karen especially to be able to develop and evolve and do the things he wants to do rather than depending on other people to decide for him what he is going to do. So Karen has to learn a different way of navigating around society and around community. He has to pick up sensory information in a different way that we do. Are you done? <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi. To Kyron, he only knows what we tell him or what we show him. It's important to expose him to a lot of different people, different mo modes of transport, different types of occupations, so that he knows what's available and what choices are there for him to make. It's important that Kyron's world does expand. If you arrive somewhere, does he know how to get there? Does he know what you passed on the way? So building those maps of, of areas is part of that. Right, we're just outside farmers now, Karen. Oops, there was a space there. I've been learning to use the cane for several months. Sometimes not very good, other times a bit better. OK. So, where are we now, Karen? At the entrance to Farmers. OK, how do you know it's Farmers? Because it's got tiles everywhere. OK. We walk this way. Yeah. And which side do we keep the building on? This side. What's that side? Right. OK, yep. Then we find the corner of farmers. Yep. We turn the corner, we yep. square off, yep. we follow the crack in the road... Yep. ..until we hit the wall with the power metres. Yep. What we're working on today is trying to get Kyron familiarised with his environment learning about obstacles and uh, things that can interfere with his route, learning a set route from one point to another and how to navigate from point to point. Aha, uh -huh. we found the corner. We square off, finding the crack.
Okay, stop. Let's, okay, go back, following the crack. So, we're at the wall of farmers. Never lose that crack. And find a wall. Aha, there's the wall. Okay, Karen, I'm going to shoot off now. Okay. And I'll meet you where? The post office. The post office. See Roger. you there, then. To begin with, it was a hands-on approach. Right, Kyron, we're going to go from one point to another point. We can there is the entrance to the post office. On the route, we're going to name various locations, like the post office, specific things that he remembers and also enjoys. Mm. Here's a bike there. Surprise! Surprise! I don't like using the cane and I've had enough of it. Why don't you like it? Because I don't want to use this. I don't want to always carry it around. I want to be free from it. You know, like other boys and girls that are not blind, they go around normally without using a cane. He wants to run around, he wants to have his fun, he wants to have his fantasy, he wants to play. He doesn't want to do serious stuff like training for a cane. That's boring, you know, that's just not kid stuff. We press the button. Going along by myself with no one by me, there'll be heaps of people that I don't know and there could be strangers that will come and say, right, come with me. OK, let's cross. What I'd say, never. Or maybe could I just wear a big suit of armour with a sword at my side in case. So we inject a lot of fun into it. I mean, like this cane we call a lightsaber because he hated his canes. But he's now thinking, well, it's actually a lightsaber and if anyone comes along, I can zap them. I'm going to show you something really cool. And... Time to get up and get dressed. One of Kyron's frustrations is he doesn't like to be independent and he likes to take advantage of the kindness of other people, particularly with his caregivers, and especially when they're new, and they will run round and try and do their best to do everything, and Kyron will play on that and use it to his advantage. We'll figure out, here's your toast, buddy. Mm. Let me just get the peanut butter. Oh my god, do I have to do this whatever? Yeah, just what just one guy. Okay. Mm. Right, what goes on first? Butter. Okay, so find the butter. Mm -hmm. I really hate this. Okay, and what do you do now? Mm -hmm. No, you're not holding the knife properly. That's it. So the steps we're taking towards independence at home is getting Kyron to do things for himself, showering, getting dressed all on his own. That butter is just so stubborn. Keep going, you're doing a good job. <laughs> you're trying to get him to learn to use utensils. He's not a big fan of the knife and the forks because he's always used his fingers. Right, have a look on your toast where you're putting the butter. I'm putting so, it there. Yep, yeah, so you need some on the other side of the toast. Okay, put your peanut butter on now. For me, I always envisage 
back home will always need support because I'm a mum and I don't want to see him getting lost in the world. But in saying that, I know I have to let go and he has to go and find his way. So I guess the older he gets, the less need he will have for a caregiver to be with him. But this is really boring. Is it good enough to eat? Yeah. I don't want to eat it. It's okay, I'll eat it. Here, yeah, you have it then. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, it tastes really good. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Hang up. Mm -hmm. Come over. Come over here. Yeah. How much one are you wanting to do first? Uh, it's Darth Vader. Okay. Yeah, we need a space. Is that H? No. Yeah. Then we need a space. I want him to do something with his life. I don't want him to constantly rely on other people. Like, I want him to find someone, get married, have a job. I don't want him to have to have caregivers for the rest of his life. What about a musician? No, I hate singing. And I don't want to well, be a... But musicians don't sing. Musicians play musical instruments. I don't want to be a musician. OK, then you won't be a musician. I want to be nothing. No, but you have to be something. I thought you wanted to be a marine biologist. I actually didn't want to. How are you going to have money? Well, do I have to have money? Well, if you, have mon if you don't have money, yeah. how are you going to have a house? And how are you going to buy all those fish that you want? I don't know. Like, what if you wanted to become a ninja? Oh, uh, I don't think being a ninja is a job. I don't have apprenticeships for that. But they do have ninja schools around the world, eh? I don't actually know. They might. They probably do, actually. But they're secret ninja schools. So next year's going to be a bit of a big change because I'm going to uni next year. I want to go all the way down to Dunedin. And me and Karen are kind of like best friends. There's no coming home to Cameron. There's no chilling out with her in the holidays. And he gets kind of, I don't know, anxious and upset when I'm away. When are you going to come back from uni? Well, you have... You know how you have terms at school? Yeah. Well, we have semesters. Yeah. They're just like terms, and we have two of them. Yeah. And mm. I'll go down in February. Yeah. And then... I don't know when the first semester break is, but there's a holiday, and then I'll come up for the holiday. And you should be on holiday then too. Yeah, um, would we be able to, um... Oh. It's all right. Come here. OK. Is different here. What can you hear? Can a you... bird. I can hear lots of birds. Can you hear lots? Yeah, I don't know what bird that is. A fan tail? I don't know. Kyron also attends the Blind Foundation. They discuss his frustrations and how to cope with them and how to deal with them. He tries to figure out what Kyron's frustrations are. Kyron gets quite anxious. But, uh, you know, in life he can't always have everything mapped out for him, so he's going to have to expect to to learn to find his own way. Don't walk into the tree. Can you feel it? Are they mangroves? No, they're not mangroves. Ooh. Going along by myself, feels like I'm going to make mistakes. Like, so I might end up in the wrong direction. Where is it? 
this way. So go this way. Now raise your hand. Can you feel the bottom? It's yeah. slippery. Yeah. Yeah. I have you, so you can bend over. That's okay. Who's that, Tui? Look. Like a trampoline, eh? Things could be in it. But those little berries. Yeah, what are these here? These little dots. Yeah. Those are the berries. There you go. Mm -hmm. Cool, eh? Yeah, what? Hey, Karen. Yeah? Can you have some lunch? Can I have a seat, mate? <laughs> You're right. Sit down beside me. What, uh, what are you finding frustrating about the cane? Uh, what don't you like about it? Did I have to... That, well, mostly being blind, I don't want to be blind. I want to see. Yes, I know, and, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. some of us are just blind, OK? I'm the same. Like, I'd like to see again, too, so I could drive my cars and drive my motorbikes and all that sort of stuff. But you are blind, and you have to accept that, and, and you have to learn everything you can to live independently as a blind person. What if you just decide to say, no, 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 I'm not going to be independent. If you say no all the time, you'll just get left behind. Would you just be a left you, outsider? You, you won't learn anything. And that's why it's important to say yes, yes, yes to everything, every opportunity. Because every opportunity you miss is one that you don't get back. Okay, you that, never get that's, back? That's right, that's how I live my life. I've run marathons, I've cycled the length of New Zealand, I've done all sorts of things because I said yes to every opportunity. But what if you think you're afraid to do something? Sometimes we are afraid to do things, but unless we give it a shot, we will never know. But so you because can you think, oh, I'm pretty scared of this, but when you've done it, you think, oh, this is lovely. That's right. an adult, it's going to be cool because I'm going to be the boss of my own self. And I can make choices for myself. <laughs>